next, let's look at the cross-sectional approach to estimating this asset pricing model. Here's what you do. Step one, run the time series regression, just like we did before. So return, I'm using A, not alpha, for a reason, uh, beta on the factor plus the error term. So you run that each time, uh, over time for each asset, and you use this to construct the beta. That's the point. Then in a second step, you run the cross-section that we've been looking at all along. You don't just sort of imagine it. You actually run that as a separate regression. Run expected returns on the betas times to get the factor risk premium. This, this is our graph. That's what we're looking for. Expected returns on betas. Uh, and alphas are the, the errors. Why not just run that as a regression? Kind of a natural idea. Now, the time series was confusing because we actually ran the regression that we weren't interested in. We were interested in the cross section. That took some thinking. This one's confusing because the letter beta is the right-hand variable in this regression. The y is expected returns. The, be the beta is the right-hand variable. The lambda, the factor risk premium, is the slope that we're looking for. And the alphas are the uh, errors of that regression relation. But that is the regression we're running. Average returns on betas. Alphas are errors. And we can in let a free intercept, or we might for want to force the intercept to zero. The theory says the intercept to be should be zero. The theory says the factor risk premium should be the mean of the factors. You can impose that or not impose that. And that's why that one's in parentheses. In this case, the mean of the factor will not be the factor risk premium. We're just going to send it through the line of all the other assets and see what fits well. So why would you do this rather than time series? Well, one reason you might do this is if the factor is not a return, for example, uh, if the factor is uh, equal to consumption growth, uh, then, then you can't treat the factor as a return. So you have to do a cross section. You might also want to do it because you want to do it. You want to use all the assets to estimate the, the line. You want to make the line fit well all the assets and not just fit the factor and the risk-free rate. OK, that's a reasonable thing to do, too. So that's what we're going to do. Now, put your econometrician hat on. Estimates. How are we getting all the numbers we want to get? Well, the betas, they're just coming from the OLS time series regression. No need to do that again. The intercept, the factor risk premium, the alphas, these are coming from either OLS or GLS estimates of that cross-sectional regression. Uh, to make that clear, I wrote down some formulas. For example, an OLS cross-sectional regression would take the, the factor risk premium as x prime x inverse x prime y. It's just the x is now betas and the y is expected returns. The GLS version would weight that by the covariance matrix of the alphas. And the covariance matrix of the alphas is the same as the covariance matrix of the errors uh, divided by the sample size. So that's uh, an easy matrix to get. So that's what I mean by OLS or GLS cross-sectional regressions. So now we know what we're going to do, how we've listed how we're going to get all the numbers. Now, statistics. What are the standard errors or test statistics associated with that procedure? Well, since that's an OLS regression, you're tempted to just look up your OLS textbook and say, fine, the, 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 the standard error of the lambda is x prime x inverse times the this, this standard error, uh, standard deviation of the residuals. But that is wrong. And I'm going to cross it out quickly so you don't have a wrong formula in front of you. Why is that wrong? First, these betas are not fixed. They are generated regressors in the same sample. So those things vary along with those things. We've got to take account of that in our sampling distribution. Worse, the alphas are correlated across assets. The OLS uh, standard errors assume that the error terms are uncorrelated across i, but the alphas are very correlated across i. Why? Where do alphas come from in sample if the alphas in truth are zero? Well, they come from correlations across firms in their residuals. The alphas are just the sums of the residuals. If Microsoft got unusually lucky in this sample, it's likely that Google got unusually lucky as well. The errors are quite correlated across assets, and therefore so are the alphas. Now, those two used to be hard econometric problems, generated regressors and correlated errors across, uh, across alphas. But they're not now, because we've got GMM. And GMM makes regression problems like this easy. How do you do problems like that? You just stack up all the moment conditions in one big thing and let the S matrix handle the correlations, say, of the betas estimated in one equation with their use as a right-hand variable in another. So I wrote down the GMM we're going to use for this. The mean of the error should be 0. 
The errors should be uncorrelated with the right-hand variable. Those are the time series regression. These two are the time series regression moments. And that's the cross-sectional regression moments uh, that we're going to define the lambda, that's one of our parameters, by the cross-sectional uh, regression. Uh, here, beta prime expected return equals beta prime beta lambda. That's the OLS uh, regression that defines lambda. So we've got our A, we've got our GT, and now it's just a pleasant hour of working out algebra to get the, uh, OL, the GMM formulas for standard errors and the test statistic. As usual, when we do GMM approaches to ordinary least squares regression, if you assume IID normal errors, it reduces to the classic formulas. And it just becomes a clean, easy way of deriving the classic formulas. So here, for example, is the classic formula for the standard error of the, of the lambda and the covariance of the alphas. They look horrible, but they're not that bad. Wait a minute. Standard errors, there's x prime x inverse, x prime omega x, x prime x inverse. That's just our usual formula for the standard error of OLS regressions when they've correlated errors. This thing here is called the Schenken correction. It corrects for the fact that the betas are estimated in the same sample, the generated regressor. And there's our friend sigma over root t, which of course belongs in a, in a, uh, in a factor risk premium standard error. Same with the covariance of the alphas. It's, it's a standard formula. It's the sort of awful formulas that always come out of econometrics. You don't have to know it. You have to know where to look it up. With covariances of the alphas, then we're ready to do the test. Is the alpha covariance inverse times alpha? That's going to have an asymptotic chi-squared distribution. Under IID normal, that turns into an F distribution, or again, bootstrap it. So cross-sectional regression, the method, what we're doing, how we got our estimates, and then formulas for standard errors and test statistics that take care of the econometric problems with these regressions. <laughs>